and welcome to this special episode of Night City Wire, the show from us at the Project Red where we talk all things Cyberpunk 2077. This is the month of Edge Runners, and today is packed with content. We got trailers, interviews, and some Night City Wire exclusives coming your way. We'll start with checking in with one of the creators of the show, Bartosz Stibor, to see if I can get any more secrets about the show before it releases on Netflix September 13th. Then, we'll dive deeper into the next game content release for Cyberpunk 2077, which we're calling, you guessed it, the Edge Runners Update. And it goes live later today. And finally, we're catching up with game director Gabe Amatangelo to discuss the past, present, and future of Cyberpunk 2077. There's plenty of surprises in store for this segment, so make sure to stick around until the end. Let's kick the show off with an edge on this trailer from famed anime creators Studio Trigger. Enjoy the mayhem! I knew from day one I'd never belong there. So why stick around for so long? was kind of her dream, all that Sokka stuff. Our dream, I guess. It's not your dream, though, is it? Come on, got something to show you. Three, two, one, showtime. yourself as a cyberpunk by how you live. Make a name by how you die. for you too. That is one awesome trailer and what's even more awesome is actually watching anime in Japanese and uh, I still remember watching things like Ghost in the Shell and Dragon Ball which is one of my favorite animes as a kid um, and yeah, I, I would watch it in Japanese, but for those that want to watch it in different languages, what can we expect in terms of the VOs for Cyberpunk Edge Runners? We have Japanese, uh, we have English, Polish, German, French, uh, 12 voiceovers, and a lot more subtitles. So we are ready to take the world. I love when everything is fully localized so everybody around the world can enjoy it. So, so kudos for that. Okay, speaking of Edge Runners, let's set the scene. So for those hearing about Edge Runners for the first time, what is Cyberpunk Edge Runners and who actually is an Edge Runner? Okay, so Edge Runner is a, is a person that is a mercenary, uh, a rebel, fights the law, fights the system, likes cool jackets, nice bikes, uh, expensive cyberwear. And Cyberpunk Edge Runners is a story about David Martinez, uh, a teenager boy who dreams about being an Edge Runner. Uh, unfortunately, one day he loses everything, uh, but he gets one thing in return. This thing is a very powerful and dangerous cyberwear who can change his life forever. And now the question is, will David uh, take it and fulfill his dream or not? Okay, is the story in Cyberpunk Edge Runners 
canon. So for those who have played the game, should you play the game, watch the anime, or watch the anime and play the game? Like, what's the, what's, what's the way to go here? Or can you experience both without having one and the other? You can do both at the same time. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, it is canon. It's 100% canon. So if you play the game, you uh, will feel like home uh, while watching Cyberpunk and Runners. It's the same city, uh, same streets, same cars, same guns. Uh, you will also meet the same characters, you know, from the game. I won't spoil anything, but I think if you're a fan, you'll be totally excited. I am for sure because uh, I watched already 10 episodes and there were some characters which I was very happy to see and I did not expect them, so that was really cool. But also, don't worry if you don't know the game, because uh, Cyberpunk and Runners is a standalone story that will suck you in. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's amazing, uh, like you will fall in love with characters, with the city, uh, and with David, uh, and I think that after you experience what David is doing in the, in the anime, uh, you will try to recreate it in the game. What about this, the style of anime and cyberpunk? What do you think about this marriage? So does this, does this work in your opinion? You know, when, when I'm thinking about cyberpunk, I see a few things. I see uh, Neuromancer, a book by, by William Gibson, Blade Runner, a book and, uh, and a movie, uh, and two great animes, Akira and Ghost in the Shell. So if you are doing a TV series that is not live action, uh, for me personally, it has to be uh, anime format. I think it's, it's just the perfect fit. Okay, you mentioned Akira and Ghost in the Shell. How can we compare these two cool classics to Cyberpunk Edge Runners? They are different. Uh, Cyberpunk has uh, much more palm trees, uh, but, but the main difference for me personally is the city. Uh, Night City is always the main protagonist or antagonist. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's never about one linear story, about one character. It's, it's always about a bunch of very uh, compelling, unique people that have problems, uh, love interests and dreams. So that's the main difference. Uh, we are not telling a story, we are telling stories. Yeah, and that's also really cool because, like you mentioned, the characters, they are very relatable and when you get to meet them, you are rooting for them, you already are picking favorites yeah. and the characters that you kind of can associate yourself with, which, which was something that I did like subconsciously just by watching. So watching. Uh, who's your favorite? Um, actually, Rebecca is Rebecca. my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Rebecca yeah. is. She's, 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 she has she's a couple wicked. like, you know, not loose, but um, <laughs> she's really, really cool. Okay, um, we saw in the trailer that um, the anime is made in collaboration with Studio Trigger. For those that don't know Studio Trigger, um, I know, but some maybe don't. Uh, what are they known for? Okay, so first of all, Studio Trigger, huge love. Uh, they are legends. They created one of the best animes in the, in the world. Uh, Darling in the Franks, Kill la Kill, A Little Witch Academia. Uh, and before creating Studio Trigger, they also uh, worked on a cult classic called Neon Genesis Evangelion. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I watched that one, loved it to bits, and I still go back from time to time and rewatch it because it's, like you said, it's, it's, it's a classic. It is, yeah. So what was uh, Studio Trigger's involvement on Cyberpunk Edge Runners? What were they responsible for? We created a story and then gave all the scripts to Studio Trigger and they adapted it into anime format. Because the idea was we wanted to create uh, a very CD Projekt Red story. Mm -hmm. So grounded, gritty, uh, and especially character driven. Uh, but we, what, what we wanted to, to, to have was unique visuals. And you saw the trailer, yeah. right? Uh, Studio Trigger are the most stylish people in the, in the anime business. Uh, their storytelling is, is over the top and the camera movement is like, is like a roller coaster ride. Yeah. So our story, their visuals, it's yeah. perfect fit. Yeah, and the animation style is also like very over the top. When you see all the action scenes, they're like 
they're so fine-tuned and so like you know dynamic that it you know breathes a little bit more like life to the whole thing which I which I personally really really enjoyed so we touched a little bit upon the story so without spoiling anything what can we expect in terms of the story and uh, David's kind of uh, route in Night City what can we expect here? okay so David will be fighting dinosaurs on Mars and stuff like no no I'm joking <laughs> but it's it's uh, imagine it's 10 episodes yeah. of mercenaries life in Night City. That's a lot. So, so David will be experiencing uh, a lot of things. He will meet crazy edge runners. He will fight gangsters, and we have eight gangs in Night City. Uh, he will meet cyber cycles, but also there will be a car chase scene, a motor chase scene, uh, even a car chase scene with an ambulance. We will have one kiss or maybe two including one on the moon so okay. maybe david will fall in love but i won't spoil anything more okay so. okay i i am already sold i i watched it i will re-watch it again once it airs on netflix for sure um Bartek, thank you for the interview it's always Thanks amazing so to talk to you and yeah always a pleasure that's all about the anime for now we're looking forward to binging the series once again as soon as it airs on netflix up next, we're going to talk about the upcoming game update for Cyberpunk 2077. In a moment, we'll join game director Gabe Amatangelo to learn more. But before we do that, check out the Edge Runners update trailer. You get your beauty sleep? Time you got up. And then Z ain't a city that lets you get by without buddies. Balance, friendship, love. What the hell else are we supposed to fight for? Oh crap, sorry, we're on. Um, I was actually thinking of a non-scripted way in order to tell you about something awesome, which is Road Trace, and you can play it later today on your phone. Yes, on Android or iOS, it's coming, it's free to play, and has no microtransactions, and it's freaking awesome, as you probably saw it on your screen. Gabe, did you see this? I have. I've seen uh, early versions of it too. It's freaking amazing. It's very cool, yes. Yeah. And yeah. you play it in the game, in the cyberpunk game as well. Yeah, yeah, and now we can also play it on your phone. Perfect. We'll talk about that more later, I guess. Yeah, we will. Um, yeah, but enough about that. All right. We're here to talk about you. No, we're here to talk about the game. Yes. <laughs> but I'll introduce myself. Yes, if All you right. could, and tell everybody what you're responsible for when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077. Sure. sure. My name's Gabe Amatangelo. I'm a game director of Cyberpunk 2077, post-launch for the updates and the upcoming expansion. Upcoming expansion. What? what? Hey, I, did the Stewie, I did like the Stewie that? turn. We'll get to that though. All right, all right. We'll get to yes, that. Yes, we will. Uh, but about uh, that, like before we get to all that, let's talk about, let's kind of go back in time. Let's talk about the past and the updates that were happening for Cyberpunk 2077. Um, so what, in your opinion, is kind of the landmark update for the game 
um, that you think had the biggest influence? Like there was a lot of stuff going on sure. recently. Well, I'd say it's a combination of 1.5 and 1.3. Mm -hmm. uh, ton of bug fixes. Uh, also sort of a uh, kind of a overhaul and re-architecture for a bunch of fundamental systems to get it working smooth across all platforms, yep. as well as to set the stage for, for future features and updates and stuff like that. So you started about 1.5, mm -hmm. I want to continue with that. What's your feeling about Cyberpunk 2077 and how the game feels and looks right now after that update? Good, good. I think, um, uh, like I said, we, we, we smoothed out a bunch of stuff and I think Cyberpunk 2077 can be kind of fully uh, experienced as intended. Uh, for you know the, the world, this characters, enjoying the story, that kind of stuff. We also had an opportunity to get in some of the community requested features, such as going to the mirror in your apartment and being able to do some cosmetic updates, uh, being able to uh, get new apartments and customize them to some extent. Uh, a bunch of different uh, little things like cleaning up uh, the map, the, the user experience, getting rid of some of the pain points in general. Uh, just to kind of smooth out the experience. Mm -hmm. The real flow was kind of bug fixing, or focus, I should say, bug fixing, smoothing out the experience, and getting the architecture in place for future updates. Yeah, I'm excited. And then, of course, of course, sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but of course, of course, the actual sort of next gen kind of fidelity uh, yeah. with the different uh, visual modes and stuff like that. Uh, beautiful, very dense night city. Um, and very moody Night City, being able to experience them in the next-gen consoles as well as PC, um, huge, hugely beautiful. Dude, now I just want to say I'm even more excited to replay the game myself once again. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Um, no so we're talking about the presence. So we have the Edge Runners update, which is freaking amazing. We saw the mashup trailer uh, with similarities between the anime as well as uh, what, what what we kind of see in Cyberpunk 2077. Now. What will we see with this update that connects Edge Runners to the world of 2077? So yeah, really fun cooperation with the with the anime, as we saw, just like stuff straight out of straight out of Night City World there in the game. Uh, you'll be able to get Martinez's jacket, wear nice. it. Uh, it takes place during the same kind of timeline. They don't they don't cross paths, but we do have a quest that kind of seeds in some of the stuff okay. and some of the Easter eggs from the the anime. Uh, you'll be able to get a weapon inspired by the anime as well, which is fun. So a number of different kind of Easter eggs and kind of tie-ins in that way. What about things that are not connected to the anime? Because I know there's a couple really really cool things that you wanted to highlight for this update. Also. Yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> wardrobe. That's the big one, right? Nice. Uh, AKA transmog, uh, AKA being able to completely customize and tailor your outfits as you want to role play, slot by slot to kind of override the, the visuals of what you currently have equipped. Uh, we have that. We also updated the Ripper docs that you can go to them and do some re-sculpting of your face, re-sculpting of your body. Uh, we added new options in entirely for all this stuff as well as some of the, the cosmetics and hair and stuff like that that you can still do at your mirror. You can also do that at the Ripper dock as well. Um, there's a bunch of things in this update. Uh, I would say we're releasing those patch notes. Check out the patch notes. Xbox Series S uh, new mode as requested by the community. Um, and of course, Road Race. It's the first of our sort of in-game arcade cabinets that you can actually play in the game. Uh, and you're playing as that mythical beast from a faraway land named after a fish and not a uh, smoking paraphernalia <laughs> or a gross bug, but a fish. This, yes. is, this is what the IP gods yes. had, had told me. Yes, true, true. And uh, Nibbles the Cat in photo mode. Nibbles yes, photo yes, mode. Nibbles the Cat in photo <laughs> mode in various different positions and stuff like that. Exactly. So you can customize. Yeah. So post your pictures. Yeah, perfect. Um, moving on now more into the future, what can we expect in terms of upcoming updates for Cyberpunk 2077? Any teases for us? What's in the future? Sure, yeah. So uh, 1.6 is the last major update for the old gen consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, going forward, uh, we remember I was talking about we're kind of uh, overhauling some systems and laying the groundwork for, for, for future stuff. Hugely requested feature from the communities coming up, and that is a complete overhaul to the COP system as well as vehicle-to-vehicle uh, -vehicle combat. Uh, it gives you a whole new feel and dimension and immersion to the city and enjoying Night City. Um, really excited about it. Uh, watch out for Max Tech. Uh, there's only so much I'm allowed to say right now because it's a future update. <laughs> uh, but we're doing a bunch of stuff in future updates. New kind of uh, gameplay loop for Melee, a bunch of new actions in the, in the perk tree, more uh, cyberware feeling cyberware, a lot of fun things that the team really kind of wants to get out there to the community and working hard on. 
All right, uh, you said that this is the last major update for uh, older gen consoles. Can we expect any smaller updates and tweaks in between? Definitely, there's gonna be some smaller updates, um, primarily focused on the tech support to keep it all running smooth. Uh, but yes, all new future uh, features and content on the current gen consoles as well as PC. Okay, I will not let you off the hook without what? telling me more. We're not done. <laughs> There's something about else? the upcoming expansion. You're the game director for it, so yes. what can we expect in yes, that? Because yes. I, everybody's dying to know, and I also want to know. So yeah, spill the beans. All right, all right. So um, we're really excited. We're having a lot of fun with it. It's a new kind of uh, uh, style of a plot we're having fun with. Uh, new cast of characters, Ooh. expanding on a, a district in Night City uh, where it primarily takes place. Um, we're having, you know what? Better than me saying, let's show a short teaser clip. So There's actually see a teaser. It. You yes. brought something with yes. you. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so a short teaser to get kind of a vibe and a feel and a little bit of uh, what's to come. Check it out. All right, let's watch it. Thank you for the interview, man. Thank you. Yeah, let's roll it. Repeat after me. I, V, do solemnly swear. I, V, do solemnly swear that I shall faithfully serve the new United States of America. That I shall faithfully serve the new United States of America. On behalf of all Americans, I thank you for your service. You know, taking that oath. Bad idea. Hey everyone, Johnny Silverhand is coming back, and so am I. Get ready for Phantom Liberty, the upcoming expansion for Cyberpunk 2077. It's awesome to be back playing the role of Johnny, and I hope you're excited to see him rocking out once more in the dark future. Keep an eye out for more info, and I'll see you again in Night City. You heard her here first. Phantom Liberty is the name and Keanu's in the game. That's all I have for you today, but that's not the end. Redstream is about to start soon with even more info on today's game update. See you next time and enjoy.